Did Jesus, as a boy, visit England? That's the legend anyways. Few people know that England's de facto national anthem, Jerusalem, is based on that very question. Here's the first stanza speaking of Jesus, the Lamb of God. And did those feet, in ancient time, walk upon England's mountains green? And was the Holy Lamb of God on England's pleasant pasture seen? Artist and poet <coughs> William Blake wrote the poem, And did those feet, in ancient times, in 1808, over a hundred years later, in 1916, England's poet laureate Robert Bridges plucked the poem from his, its bin of historical absurdity for a collection of British poetry. Composer Hubert Perry, in the same year, set the poem to music. It has been known as Jerusalem ever since. The song has since become a staple of modern British culture, sung at the recent <laughs> royal wedding <coughs> and at the funeral of Princess Diana. It has been featured in a number of movies and television works, including the Academy Award winning picture Chariots of Fire. The picture derives its name from the celebrated chorus in the song, Bring me <coughs> my bow, of burning gold. Bring me my arrows of desire. Bring me, O spear, O clouds unfold. Bring me my chariot of fire. Few people, even few Brits, realize that this song celebrates the mythology that Jesus, as a young boy, traveled to England. The trip was made with his uncle, Joseph of Arimathea, a tin merchant, and Mary's brother, this was a business trip to England. The only mentions of Joseph's Arimathea in the Bible <coughs> are in association with providing the tomb for Jesus' body. The Bible <coughs> is largely silent on Jesus from childhood to public ministry. This legend and its unstantiated history has been alive for almost 2,000 years. Further legend believes that Joseph of Arimathea returned after the death of Jesus and started the first Christian church of England in the village of Glastonbury around 60 AD. The myth purports that, Je that Joseph decided upon Glastonbury because when he put his staff into the ground on Werall Hill, it took root and flowered. This tree is known as the Glastonbury Thorn. A descendant of that first tree still stands and blooms small white flowers twice a year. One of the flowerings happens, some say miraculously, around Christmas time. For the last hundred years, it has been a royal tradition for the king or queen of Ink's family to celebrate Christmas dinner with a bow of blooms from the glossberry thorn on the table. The bow is cut every year at Christmas time by the oldest child in the second grade in the glossberry school system.